632. We can call a meeting to order. Uh, August 6th. All right. Um, folks are here for the meeting, so we don't have any public comment. We don't have any public hearings. We don't have any appointments. So, you want to start off? I'm going to let you introduce yourself because I'm probably not going to. Yeah, make sure that microphone's on. Uh, hello, my name is Siddhant. Should I like stay close? You want to stay within about a couple of feet of us. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Siddhant Donaraj. I'm here with Troop 361 in Nashua. Um, I'm presenting my Eagle Scout project proposal. I lived in that. I live in Merrimack for about 10 years now. Um, I originally lived in Nashua, but um, over the time I've grown like a love for Merrimack because it's a it's a nice small area. You get to know everyone here, um, and I really enjoy it. So I thought, why not? Um, show my love for Merrimack by doing a proposal I mean, for a project here. So what it is, is it's a kiosk. And the purpose of the kiosk, I know I made a typo, it's the Sklar waterfront, not the Skylar waterfront, sorry about that. But and so the kiosk is to inform people, visitors, who are going to the Sklar waterfront park to um, any Pictures, there can be pictures, there can be maps, there can be just events, news, anything that, um, that the town wants. So the features, um, it's a basic kiosk design. It's made by two 4x4s, four bolted down into a concrete slab. And there'll obviously be a roof. There'll be in the middle an acrylic case with the cork board where the town can put anything. Um, pictures, like I said. And the acrylic case is there to keep it from getting wet um, if anything does happen. And then there will be a weatherproof um, stain that will make it look nice and keep it from rotting so it will last for many, many years. So the features, I wanted to put a technological twist to the kiosk just so it's uh, more unique. And so some features I thought of was a bench attached to the kiosk. This way that people who are visiting can take a rest if they need to. It won't affect the kiosk in any way. It will just make it um, more unique and also solar lighting. I wanted to do something like with technology and the best I thought was solar panels. Um, and this solar lighting is gonna allow visibility during the nighttime if anyone's in the area they wanna check it out. This solar panels will be there at the nighttime. Um, it'll be completely uh, self running so no one's gonna have to maintain it. And so it'll be really cool. It'll be unique than other ones in the area. So the pricing. What I calculated is one kiosk, the basic would be four hundred dollars. With the bench would be seventy five dollars extra and then the solar panel lighting would be sixty dollars. But I think the main focus is to do both of them together to make it as unique as possible and um, so uh, that's what I want to do. I don't know if there's anything else that you would like to add at the end but I would like to make it as unique as possible. Put a bench, put solar panel lighting. That's wrong with so fundraising, um, I was talking with my Boy Scout troop and usually what Eagle Scouts in the past have done is they have done bake sales and with the bake sales, uh, maybe three times in one day, six hour day, you can easily fundraise this money. And also I want, at my, my um, troop meets at a church and what people have done before, they've had Saturday breakfast and so I'll put out flyers to friends, families, um, on telephone posts, people know and a family can come, a single person can come in the morning on Saturday. Uh, I haven't chosen a time yet, but people can come, they can eat breakfast, they can enjoy, talk with other Eagle Scouts, um, other families, and they can bring their whole family, they can have a good time. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments, um, I just wanna add, I, on the page next to it, I put a materials list just to, if you had any, like, if you wanna be more specific about how it's gonna be made, there's a materials list, and that's how I got the price. Siddhanth, I'm just curious now, I'm trying to, where is the kiosk going to go? It's going to go, there's going to be a road. Yep. Um, now, I, I, to help me out, I know you go under the railroad tracks through that little yeah. tunnel there. So stop me from there, where would, where would it be? So yeah. there'll be... Uh, Can I interrupt for a second? We didn't give him specifics on exactly oh, okay. where it would go. That's one of the things that we need oh, to work out. Matt had a good spot. Yeah. Um, that made a lot of sense. You want to mention that spot? After you go under the tunnel, 
um, you'll see the uh, radio controlled airplane field mm -hmm. on the left hand side and then there's almost an island of just brush and trees and small bushes and you there's almost like a road around the island mm -hmm. that little island right right up close to it that I think that would be a good Area. a good spot um, and you could even put it off a little bit if there's going to be a bench on either side mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, put it, put it off the island a little bit so that you could sit on the back side of it. Mm -hmm. I think it, I don't think that, uh, shrubbery there is going to grow anymore because it's kind of growing through the, you know, what used to be a road base. And I think once, you know, more people are using it, it'll just stay, mm -hmm. that area won't, won't grow up too much anymore, I don't think. So that's like just beyond the entrance to the to the airplane model, airplane flying place. Right, right. yeah, the, the airplane field is on the left-hand side, and this is just a little further, you You'd know. You'd be looking right at it when you drove in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be which would be great, because then, yeah. you know, if you, uh, I, I really like the, the um, what page it is, this, this picture here, <clears throat> how it has the, uh, yes, yeah, you can't see it as well there. But right under the roof, mm -hmm. there's a little, you know, uh, almost a like a sign, yeah. like a sign that mm -hmm. says what it is. Yeah. You know, you could, mm -hmm. you could like really. A big or, sign to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, you know, even if you don't get to that, we could put something mm -hmm. there, yeah. and it would be just be great because once people drive in, then they s actually see, see the yeah. name. I think that would be really good because even the radio control uh, airplane folks, they have their name over on their side. So I think it would be nice if we had, you know, the town had a name and that would be, that would give us a great place for it. If you, you know, give us that whatever yeah. three mm -hmm. feet or two feet there, mm -hmm. be a good spot for it. I like the design. It's great. And the, make everything as vandal proof as you can. Because <laughs> yeah. This is an area that, that's just, you know, being kind of developed by us. Uh, developed not the right word, but preserved, conserved. Mm. Um, and you know, there's a lot yeah. of vehicle ATV traffic, and they don't want to give that area up. Mm -hmm. um, so they're yeah. we've lost signs and stuff like that down there. Okay. I, I like the concept of the light, but I'm not so sure that would survive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try to make everything um, it, as last as long as right. I can. Because that's it's, my it's, power. A, it's a it's a fairly remote spot. Yeah. So it's not like it's a kiosk. It's right out here and. Or something like that. Yeah. You can't really get away with too much. I think down there would be mm -hmm. tempting. The great thing is that it's going to be an announcement that yeah. something's happening here, mm -hmm. and we're really looking forward to that. Um, I think that's necessary. What's your physical size of the build of the board going to be? What are you thinking? Um, I have a blueprint. I I had um, an Eagle Scout my proposal. I'm going to turn in, but I think um, the concrete slab will be about eight by ten, just so it's a big area. Um, but the kiosk will be like maybe eight by six, something like that. So it's not going to be too big, but it's not going to be that's small. Big. It's pretty that's big. big. <laughs> but if I'm going to, yeah. Okay. Um, but I want people to be able to sit if it's raining. Uh, I want the roof to be able to protect them from the weather. But it's going to be like shed. <laughs> that's wonderful. This is the first yeah. time I've seen a bench on a kiosk. That's, yeah, a, that's great a great idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Question about, and, and I'm going to ask it to you guys too, should this be done in um, pressure treated wood or? Yeah, I'll be doing pressure treated okay. wood so it doesn't uh, rot. Uh, in the picture, that bench mm -hmm. appears to be cedar. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you do it pressure treated, I think that's fine too. But mm -hmm. that, that looks like cedar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I will be staining it all the wood, so it won't be like the like what it comes as. I'll make it into a nice color. You could also do what was the stuff that um, someone else was doing benches. Um, Carson, and he's doing it with the the. Yeah, they they're using a, a man-made product. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's another option for you too, if you wanted to do that. It's like almost like the tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah the, the plastic board or fiber board. Yeah, that way it doesn't have to be restained all the mm -hmm. time. Just for the for the bench. Mm -hmm. What was the other thing I was going to ask you? So, so we keep we keep saying Scalar property. Uh, 
this is obviously going to be down there in front of the town parcel, the boat landing, and the Scalar parcel. So obviously I th we're going to have to, where the kiosk is saying is going to go is on town property, so we're going to have to go in front of the town council. I'll but, walk you through that. But, you know, plan-wise, we going to try to combine these parcels a little bit? Is that what we're trying to yeah. put them on the map is kind of one one block? I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Okay. To just I think the town's kind of gone away from making that the town right boat ramp. Yep. Yeah, they want to do it down the down the street a little bit, but that but it's there. That, that's and it like, still gets used. Yeah. It's so like up and I mean, it'd be great if the town could change their mind again. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know what's happening down by the Y there, by the river there. N nothing. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. As far as the activity the boat, that the boat for the boat ramp, um, I I sent an email. I think I cc'd everybody here, in it to the town manager, um, asking that the chief, the police chief, step up patrols. And I also asked for some suggestions as we talked about uh, maybe using some larger rocks to start to build a, something more natural, not a chain link fence, but something to start to block off these man-made trails for the the made by cars and four-wheelers and stuff um and kyle said that that they kyle fox um indicated that um they don't have enough large stone um, i suggested that maybe whenever we're doing some work excavating in the town encounters some of these bring them down there and use them uh, it doesn't have to be done all at once or you know and I don't know the realistically what we can do, but you know you could even go with the old stone wall like we've had throughout our along all our roads and stuff like that. Again, I don't know how realistic it is or the cost of it. So, but it's ideas, and the chief has told the uh, told me and he's mentioned to the town councilor that uh, they're going to uh, you know step up the patrols, and they haven't they haven't encountered any problems. So I don't know, I haven't heard anything further. So. And if there is, I think that we need to keep talking about it if, there con if there's continued issues, people. Do you know if the town is seriously moving with the boat ramp further south by the wastewater? The, way, the plan that I saw was down by wastewater. And again, it's, um, I, I don't know how big a ramp it is. It almost looks, I, I, and I, Kyle did a presentation on it, but I'm... I'm starting to wonder if you can back a bass boat in where or if this is more of a, a ramp to drop in your canoe or your kayak or something to that effect so that that's still up in the air but uh that's you that, know we can we can get into that i don't want to yeah yeah, yeah i'm kind of <laughs> just uh, keeping this poor guy here yeah. so do you need something signed tonight I don't need anything signed. I, I want to present. I want to see if there's anything that you would like to add. If there's anything that you're looking that should be on the kiosk. Um, s certainly, I, you know, your next step you're going to have to go in front of town council. Yeah. I would think it, particularly because of the size that you're planning. You, you see, I'd like I'd like to see some plans. And I know mm -hmm. before you go in front of town council, there's going to be people that want to get an yeah. idea of how, what, how, what kind of structure this is going to mm -hmm. be. So. If, uh, if you have some plans, some blueprints or something. Yeah, I have the blueprints. Yeah, we'd, love to, we'd love to see them. You don't have to come back and present. If you could just send them to, to Gina or myself. Okay, yeah, we, that's fine. We, that we can share them. If what's, what are you planning on putting down on the base again? It's going to be concrete. I'm going to excavate it out and then put a concrete base. Oh, you are? Okay. Did you include that in your price? Yes, I did. I okay. Did. Should be easy digging. <laughs> Should be. Should be. Yeah. Should be. <laughs> Should be. Should be. Yeah, if not, uh, maybe Mark can help us. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. We, we, we know someone who lives near there who might have equipment to help if you get um, in a bind. So he has a backhoe and all that That's stuff. a pretty big pad, 8 by 10. Yeah, that is a big, a big It's pad. big, but um, I wanted to make the kiosk like stand out. I don't want, because I've seen smaller kiosks, but I want to make it a little bit bigger. So just so, um, especially if I'm going to add a bench. I, w I don't want it to be like the bench is sticking out more than the roof. Right. I want the roof to be big so it covers the bench. So another question too that was brought up by um, another Eagle Scout candidate that I'll bring up later, but if Sid Hump wants to put um, a plaque or something on the bench, that the, the one that the, the Eagle Scout now is looking for, so it says um, Eagle Scout project presented to, and then whether it would be to the Merrimack Conservation Commission or to 
town of Merrimack or the Sklar property or whatever, and then put Saddam's name and the date. So is that something that I think that's great? Idea. I think it's yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd like to see that. So if yeah. you'd like to put a plaque yeah, on there, yeah, that's on then the bottom of it. Um, well, you can put it like maybe on the back of the bench or somewhere yeah. on there so that it's in a you know get mm -hmm. you should get credit for this. Yeah, this yeah. Is some, a great people project. see it. Yeah, yeah. We want, we want people to see it. I mean, this yeah. is what you're doing is a, is a service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's it's people huge. should see it. Yep, that's so. wonderful. The only thing I'd ask is um, on your next presentation, you're going to see me again. Um, <laughs> But uh, on your next presentation, if you happen to go down there, can you take a picture of where the commission has so show it, show the okay. council where it's proposed to be? Mm -hmm. Okay, just a photo to add to your PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you might want to have one there and then one way back with like a chair or some some sort of marker. Say it's going to be here. That way okay. people can see the perspective. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so. Do we need to go with someone else to get the exact? Okay, come on up and we'll have you just sign in real quick and talk oh, into no. <laughs> Let him talk then. Okay. <laughs> you want to ask your mom's question then? Uh, she just, <laughs> she wanted to know if, um, like, where it is, do we have to find the exact spot? I yeah. If, if you go down there, have, have you been down there? No, I haven't. Okay. If you, if you go down there, you'll you'll see what we're talking about. There's an, yeah. there's an island on the road. It's, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. If, if you go down there and, 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 and miss it, and let us know. We'll, <laughs> we'll come down. But it's so uh, basically right in front of the beginning yeah. of the island. Yeah, right? it's it's kind of you, mm -hmm. when you drive through the bridge, you're you're looking at it. Yeah. Okay. If you yeah. and if you but, but want, it is I a little ways down, down, down the street. Uh, yeah. I think I can figure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, you tap on a from, snake. from the end of the tunnel, when you drive through, yeah. um, you know, if, if you look to the left, you'll see the grass field where the airplane, mm -hmm. the uh, robo control airplanes fly, and then right in front of you is a big dirt parking lot I mean it's it's big okay a couple football fields long and probably you know I'm gonna guess uh, 500 feet from the tunnel you're gonna see a little bit of just you know bushes and mm -hmm. small trees yeah. and things right there well, right okay. right in front of that so when you go in you've actually you know you you've entered a little bit you've driven a little bit and then you have the kiosk okay. there yeah. and Forks out. Yeah, okay. for, for the road goes, you can kind of, you can either go right or left. You can't go through it because there's, you know, the, the shrubs there, but you mm -hmm. can either go right and left, right there. Okay. I'll be sure to. That's wonderful. You did a good job. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yes. Thank you. Any questions for us? I don't know. I, I have one question. For the roofing, um, I thought my dad posed this question. Do you want, like, um, the metal roofing? Or do you want the, uh, the tile one with the shingles? Yeah, shingles. Because I looked at the other ones and they use shingles um, around the area, but I, I, I know metal would be probably um, it would stay longer. I think just in case anything happens. But my dad told me that if you guys want, um, you want to make it all look the same. Obviously, you don't want it to look a lot different than the others. So that's just the one question that I had. I think all the ones we really have are shingle. So uh, it doesn't really. But bother I mean, me. would you would you have any con any problem with that one being on metal roof? What would you like to do? I think metal works. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, whichever I'm one makes it like look the best is what I want to do. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have yes all of the ones we have now are shingled. Shingled, yeah, that's what I saw. Okay, I'll do shingled then. No, I I don't have. A I issue think metal would look cool. Yeah, yeah I don't have a pro problem. If with you metal. can get metal roof. It, it doesn't matter. I'll be fundraising all of it. Yeah. So whichever one that you guys want is the one I'll do. That's that one's going to last a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah, you might actually get donations, too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you talk yeah. to that. I talked Because a lot of the metal roofing comes off. It's, it's rolled and stamped on site. Mm -hmm. So, if, you know, there'll be six, eight feet at the end of a roll yeah. that's not going on the roof. Mm -hmm. They can throw it away. So, yeah. you should. so okay. if you, you, you call some of those guys, you might be able to get some pieces that are, mm -hmm. you know, within yeah. you, with what you need. Yeah. Right now. Depends how big the roof's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll um, email you and let you know the mm -hmm. procedure for getting on the town council agenda. Okay. And then when you're on, just let me know, and okay. I'll go down and bring my pom-poms and cheer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, too, when, and when you get your dates for your fundraising, when you know yeah. r exactly where and when, let us know, and we'll put it on the website. Okay. So, you know, try to advertise as much for you as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Oh,
question before you go. Are you planning on doing trying to get this done this year before the snow flies, or is this something you think? I mean, I I'm gonna try to do it before this um snow comes, but if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. It depends on how um fast I can get it on the eagle board for for the um, Boy Scouts. Do you want these back? No, you can keep them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Wildcat Falls sign purchase. You guys all saw this little uh, little sign that Peter found. The electric bikes. Apparently, they're having some. I know you said you spoke to uh, the manufacturer about the electric bikes in there, but they're still. Uh, They're driving in Wild uh, Wildcat Falls. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. Orsville, I think. Orsville. Oh, okay. Orsville, that Wildcat. Yeah, sorry. Something shy. I don't recall that. So this is uh, this uh, their proposal. They wanted to buy um, uh, what did they say? How many signs they wanted? Oh, just three. You just wanted three signs. Twelve by eighteen. The total is sixty dollars. I'd like to make a motion to approve this purchase. Motion by Matt. If I could just question, because this may be something that came up before I be, uh, became a member of the commission, but is there a, an elect people? Is there a problem with the people on electric bikes in the in Horsell? I think the uh, the. The problem is more like uh, nationwide, not yeah. just at Horse Hill. <laughs> um, electric bikes, uh, they, the state is actually going through and changing regulations for electric bikes on rail trails, mm -hmm. uh, state yeah. you know paths and things like that. And uh, they're allowing, there's three types. There's type one, two, and three. And the state has actually outlawed all type three on everything but roads. And they're considering outlawing them on the road as well. Um, because it's almost as fast as a car. I saw one the other day. Yeah. <laughs> I was pretty surprised. So single track trails like we have in Horse Hill and Greater Woods and Wildcat Falls and a number of other places in town. Um, you have these e-bikes. Um, a lot of them not necessarily meant for the trails. And some of them are. Some of them are e-mountain bikes. But if you picture the single track trails, say in Horse Hill, like a trail like, you know, Blodgett Hill Trail mm -hmm. or Twister, or, you know, one of the, one of the tighter trails. Yep. And you picture somebody coming down the hill, natural surface, single track trail. Typically when somebody's coming down a hill, they're going faster. Well, if somebody was coming up the other way on a, on a regular bike, they're going slow because they're climbing the hill. So there's, you know, very little chance that people are going to come into contact because the person that's going fast can stop and the person that's going uphill can just stop pedaling and they stop. If an e-bike is going up the hill with the motor or pedal assist mm -hmm. on and they're going 20 and the person's coming down the hill at 20, there's a good chance that there's going to be contact. Okay. So that's been the problem statewide. Um, and there have been a lot of instances, I don't know of any in the state of New Hampshire, but there's been a lot of instances in the country that have pushed states to change regulations very quickly. We made the decision. We, we made the decision that they're motorized. Yeah. These are, this is a motorized vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we made a decision that on all of our parcels that 
don't support motorized trails, we would have no e-bike signs. We just haven't got them yet. Yeah. So here's a subcommittee being proactive. Okay. Yeah, and you know, and that was my question was, if if I had missed something and there was this was already becoming a problem. But I see what you're saying, Matt, and I don't disagree with it. Because in, in the I've seen one on the trail, and it was of course it was in Greater Woods, and it's it's a fast bike. It's great. They're doing burnouts on them. They like get in a trail like, oh hey, quick, watch this. It's like it's a dirt, it's a it's a dirt bike. And I'm like, okay, you just ruined it. I thought they were really cool until I saw that. <laughs> so I'm, you know, this is, I think we're going to have some of the same problems in Greater Woods, some of the, some of the non-motorized trails, but that's the only bike I've seen. I haven't seen them since, so. And that kid's young. So. Oh, you see him? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. So if, like, we put signs in Greater Woods, they would have to have additional wording saying no motorized, uh, well, assisted bikes. Unless on yellow trails. Unless, yeah. Yeah. Or on this trail. Yeah. Now, do we have to change anything in writing? Or? Well, I, I don't believe so. I think we, we said that they're motorized vehicles. They're motorized, they're motorized bikes. Yeah. So we, uh, we've set up motorized and non-motorized and all of our, mostly all of our decisions are for the mm -hmm. parks and, and the properties. Right. We, we, we use the term motorized and non-motorized because we knew coming down the road that okay. motor could be almost anything. But, but I, I think we should get more than just the minimum here. We should be prepared to put them on Wildcat Falls and a few other places where motorized use is not allowed. Mm -hmm. so, so are you saying you think more signs should be ordered? I, th I think we should be prepared to get, we should. I think we should just get some more. We should, you know, maybe, there's, maybe there's even a discount at volume. I have no idea. But I think, I think we should bump the number to like 10 and be prepared to use them. We can store them in the in the office downstairs, so it's not a question of, of that. And it'd be nice to be able to pull them out. So, now with changing it to ten, would you see uh, somebody from purchasing by it instead of having the subcommittee handle that? Uh, we could do that as well. We could ask we could ask town staff to order them for us. They're roughly fifteen dollars a piece. And I don't know, we don't, we don't know what the, yeah, 1467. So, how many more do you want? Putting three on Horse Hill, we, you know, putting three on all the properties? Wasserman. Wasserman. Ball. That's yeah. So we have a motion on the floor that we never seconded. Um, we're talking. We're having discussion with the with the motion on the floor. So if you think about it, at Greater Woods, so two out of the three accesses are a motor mm -hmm. bike. You can't go in there. School, no. BB Lane, no. No. Because it's just Greater Road. Would you like to withdraw your motion and start over? Yeah, I'd like to amend my motion to, <laughs> instead of ordering three signs, ordering 12 signs, and uh, having somebody from town staff get to the site and, and place that order. How much are the signs again? 1467 a piece, but it's a possibility that if we're over 10 or that there's a discount. From what we know right now, it would be $176. Okay. But second. there's a motion on the floor. Second sure. that. Second by, by Gina. Gina. <laughs> I'm going to call me Rosa. And I was like, that's not right. From Fund 53? Yes. Fund From Fund 53. All right, so 12 signs. All right, so do we have any comments and questions before we talk about before we vote? <laughs> <laughs> We've already discussed it all. <laughs> so I'm going to tell Peter that we're going to go ahead and purchase them, but they're not coming out of the Horse Hill, Horse Hill Fund. Right. And we'll, we'll get this down to uh, 
Capcom development and they can order them. Super. So it's $176 and it's going to be, you know, $15 with the tax. So you're going to be, it's going to be $200 probably. Well, shipping. It, yeah, that's what I'm saying. With tax and shipping and all that, it's going to be, it's going to be close to, it's going to be close to $200. If there's no price break at 12. Mm -hmm. Why would there be tax on it? Probably not. Okay. They're probably coming from some state that, yeah. the, the mock-up on the website mm -hmm. had some state tax or something, but I doubt they'll be. Tax. Unless yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no, he's got a thing, so it's no, it's no sales tax. The shipping is fifteen dollars. So, you know, one hundred and eighty and fifteen, you know, one ninety five. And of course, that may be less if there's any kind of price break. So that's all good. Twelve signs at at one fifty three. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes six zero zero. Okay. Um, old business policy discussion uh, regarding abating and conservation properties. I reached out to the original. Apparently, this has happened twice now. Uh, someone else has approached um, Com Dev uh, regarding baiting for for deer. Uh, I've not heard back from that person either. I did reach out to the first person uh, twice now and have not heard anything in response. So they were invited tonight. I gave them the schedules for for us for town council and the website for you know how to get on the agenda with all the with the agenda requests. So I've, and again we've not heard back. So it may just be a busy hunting season for them. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, that being said, the we do have a Chapter 111 update, and I don't think that we ever had in our mind that the abating going on to uh, into our Chapter 111. But this might just be, you know, from confluence, a good time to put abating into our conservation properties. Mm -hmm. No, yes, maybe. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly something to consider. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we realize that, well, we can put it in Chapter 111 and cover all open space properties that are covered by the chapter or right. a portion thereof. Right. Uh, but if we want to take a stand today against baiting, we can only take a stand on the properties we own. That's true. Which is a subset, which you could do as well. Isn't it illegal to feed deer through New Hampshire? Period. You, they have to get a permit to bait. And no, the but, but just feeding bears. Don't they? Don't they say don't don't feed the bears? Well, they say don't feed the bears, but I don't know if it's illegal. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if they consider. I don't know if they consider baiting, feeding. You know, I, I understand what you're saying, but you know, they don't say don't 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 put stuff out in your backyard to try to bring wildlife into your backyard. Right. There's when people are baiting, they're typically hunting. Right. So, I, they may be drawing a a line between that I don't know but I wouldn't be surprised yeah, I'm not a, I'm not aware of any law either and I think we've always whenever when I was on the PD whenever we is had issues with animals we always just ask folks don't feed them yeah. because you're gonna you know let them let them do their their natural thing but inevitably you always have a couple of folks that want to feed the moose or the bear or something once in a while Do you, well, do, uh, do, we, do we feel we're we want to take a stand on baiting on our properties, or we want to wait to have someone that is? I would like to take a stand on baiting on our properties. <laughs> Jay just left. I knew you. Uh, of course you would. Yes, we know that. <laughs> um, but do you, do you want? Do we want to try to see if we can get hold of one of these guys and have them come talk to us, or you want to wait? made an effort already yeah i have but we, we can i mean it's the the, 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 the it's gone it, it's august 1st was the deadline oh, okay so it, we're already past it so i mean like you said last time we, they got a year hmm. they got a year go ahead i i um, i guess my only concern about bringing that up and dealing with that tonight is to to take a vote and say 
and if that's what I'm hearing correctly is to have it and put it in uh, chapter 111 maybe we should formally put it on our public agenda to say that the discussion of putting it in and, and um, uh, not allowing the baiting of beers on Commission property we should put that on the public agenda so if there is somebody that wants to speak to it and wants to support it they have the opportunity to come in and if, and in that next meeting we do it and then ultimately um, if no one shows or they do let's hear what everybody's got to say and then formally take a vote on whether to put it in 111 well, we did we did put it on the we did put it on the agenda now oh, you, you yeah. did and I'm not that's I'm, that's I'm, I thought it was just for the purpose of these individuals well, let's just say I, I don't think we're I don't I wasn't intending to go as far as chapter 111 I was just thinking down the road we're gonna have these you know kind of checkbox like what's what's this property good yes no what you know those little kind of map of the properties and this is probably something I think we should add um, I was thinking more just now I mean again it's past August 1st I don't know about baiting for other animals I don't know what the what the timelines are but it's a critical time for putting in the chapter 111 correct yeah but that's we're gonna have to come uh, up yeah. with a criteria for yeah. chapter 11 we haven't you know we've we've tossed that around but that's just something else we can add into our criteria list so my thoughts are is we're past the window so I don't think we have to act yep. tonight okay uh, baiting should always require landowner permission so no one should be able to do it before coming to see us anyways mm -hmm. So I, again, I don't think we have to act. And the last point is, is we're working on Chapter 111 and properties. And as we work through that process over the next six months, we can work it right in. There'll be a full public hearing process that goes with the Chapter 111 update. I think we should just let it go as part of the process. Okay. Again, I mean, my only concern is I don't know about debating for other animals. I mean, bear was apparently August 1st. I don't know if that covers all hunting, all mammals, all, I don't know. So we could we could run up against a, another question, you know, hey, October 1st is the date for baiting turkeys. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So well. I just don't know. Okay. Um, did everyone get a chance to read the uh, proposal from Moosewood Biological regarding the biological survey? Ecological survey. Wow. Comments or questions? And <laughs> I mean, Jeff's. Jeff's. Uh, you go back and look at his other proposals. Are they pretty, pretty much right in line with this? I guess the one thing I would ask is, um, and I and I could I don't know maybe you folks um, could answer it better is is that I know we've got this moose moosewood ecological but did we take any other opportunity or bids from any other sim is there similar companies that do the same thing sure. to shop around to get the best bang for our buck or anything like that. No, we, we 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 could do that. We have we have not, but we have uh, we have other companies that we do business with. We've used Moosewood for quite a bit of business in town, um, and we do. I feel we get good return because uh, Jeff is very familiar with the town. Yep. So he's oh yeah, that was like that. I, I did that work you know four years ago. I'll go pull that report, and so we. I, I feel we get good a good return from his his investment mm -hmm. and uh, he does a nice job he uses a lot of interns too which is great so we get some we get some pretty, pretty smart people out here walking around doing something and they come back and help us on other things they're just kind of pro forma which is nice but no we have not gone out as a competitive bid for this yeah, just I'm just curious because frequently when we, that happens with us with the council we'll talk about have we shopped it around a little bit to see yeah. what's out there that's all T to me, this was a pretty small. I knew this was going to be a relatively small quote. And uh, you know, when we do big projects, we do the logging, things like that, that. That gets shopped out. Something like this, where you know, it was just like, okay, it's, it's going to be pretty small, small money, as far as I was concerned. 
per the town's purchasing policy, this falls under specialized skills. There's a um, like like we don't we don't shop the attorney fees and 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 uh, we don't shop certain engineering uh, things like that. So uh, so that's kind of why I didn't we I didn't push for it. I think we fall well within the purchasing policy of the town by doing what mm -hmm. we're doing. Um, but uh, but Jeff is extremely familiar with these properties, especially this one. This will be his probably fourth time on the property doing work, but this will be the most comprehensive one mm -hmm. that pulls it all together. So, okay. so I, I, I feel he's got a leg up on everyone else when it comes to this. So, okay. yeah. yeah, and I and you know, uh, and having been involved in the bidding process, um, not not with the commission, but uh, you know, and I'm aware that too there is a level of you, you may get the low bid, but sometimes the low bid isn't always the best, and I get that, and there's. Right. And I can I see now from speaking to everybody that there's obviously a reason why. So, mm -hmm. but thanks. Yeah. One of the things that uh, Jeff and I spoke about was community outreach, and I really didn't expect it to be in in this document, but it does cover our vernal pool walk yeah. in the spring, and he also put in the uh, a winter hike, which he did uh, a number of years ago. Doing the transits in the transits in the woods and teaching, took the kids out there about animal tracking, and they set up some. Which was, was very interesting, actually. I I enjoyed it. Some of the seventh and eighth graders weren't even paying attention. I thought it was really cool. But <laughs> um, he, it, those are both in here, and they're wrapped into this price. So a agreeing to this also is, you know, by agreeing to this, we're also agreeing to doing two community events yep. unless we want to take them out unless we want to back them out of here <laughs> well and I think we know what what we're getting for we know the value that we're getting for the dollar for this I mean if we hire someone else we don't really know how everything's going to be so I think he's the the best best person for the job and that's good value for everything that we're getting here are we interested in doing the turtle telemetry again Just because it's just because it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, we we learned a lot. I mean, yeah, we wouldn't have Jeff. Had, Jeff learned a lot. We had no idea that 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 certain um, state endangered turtles move so much in there yep. while they're on the ground. You wouldn't think they would go miles, but they go miles. Yep. They cross roads. Yeah, we, we've got the data now, so it's pretty pretty incredible. Which means that when we're thinking of preserving. Uh, uh, conserving their habitats that we have to think beyond just you know a the few pool. hundred feet from the pond mm. because they go more than a few hundred feet from a pond mm. they go miles so and, it, and I would imagine uh, south of Busick Lake Road oh yeah where that I'm, I'm oh, imagining yeah. them into Busick all the time so I, I'm really interested to see that yeah you know so, some may get picked off on that curve <laughs> 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 oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll know right when it happens. <laughs> oh, well. a, there was a snapper over there on the BB side of the road in the they had the coolest in the thing. sand like this big last year. Yeah. And yeah. cars would drive by and he would <laughs> and he'd come and stop. Yeah. They had the coolest thing. They're like they're just like a prehistoric creature, man. They're on <laughs> Matra. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it, that's a full yes. Well, okay. So, <laughs> well, it's he's he, he's got some he's got some. Uh, Get that broken out, I saw. It's, yeah, he's broken it out, and he says it's it's going to be a two thousand dollar, about a two thousand dollar ad was his is you know basically his NTE price. But then when you go look at his price, it's it's less than that. His final price. So, <coughs> it's you know, I, you know I guess economies of scale. He's giving us a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. Because the up in the agreement, it's thirty-one. Th it's it's uh, thirty-one thousand, and then here in the on the bottom, it's thirty-two. So it's not really a two thousand dollar. Yeah, not quite a two thousand dollar ad. No, I'm I'm good with it. I I look forward to the output. Yeah. Jeff is uh, he's actually I just he just sent me an email earlier today. He's like, look, you know. If I'm going to do this, I really, I, I just need to know because I'm, I booked out a lot of my fall. Mm -hmm. 
So are oh, we planning on doing it this fall? Oh, he's yeah. yeah, he's starting. He wants to start in September. Yeah, he wants. He'll be at our next, uh, September meeting, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Can you entertain a motion? Yes, I will. Okay, I would like to make a motion that we, Merritt Conservation Commission, spend thirty-two thousand six hundred and eighty dollars from ten fifty-three, or the. Rita Woods Ecological yeah. Inventory. Rita Woods Ecological Inventory. Inventory. And that we also authorize Gage Perry to sign. Yeah. I'll second that. Second by Tim. Any questions and comments? Yeah, just a good question. Do we want to allow a little bit of breathing room in case there needs to be a modification without having to go back before the commission? Sure. You want to go not to exceed 35000 um, Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. And it, it gauges discretion. Okay. Do you want me to restate the motion? Or are we good? I think we're good. Okay. I think we're good. NTE 35, 35K. Okay. Um, so I have one, we have a another budget uh, no, that we pay things for education, mm -hmm. and that's we have in the past used that to pay for the um, Vernal pool, pool, Vernal pool party. So where this is wrapped into this, do we have any concern about transferring money from the other fund, or we're just going to leave it be? This is fund fifty three. How much is the Vernal Pool Party normally? It's, it's, it's usually, you know, a few hundred dollars. Oh, that's and it's gonna And it's going to be two of them. So, I mean, if it, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to make a guess, but it's it's not usually all that much money. What was the, the other You're fund right. type? Um, it's, we have Fund 53 and we have Fund 57. Well, yeah, so we've used, so our education budget is tied up in the town budget. So... That's that's the one piece that that gets that gets part of the whole town budget process. So, I uh, we can ask him to separately bill us, and then we could submit it through the town budget to, okay. to into Tim Thompson. So, okay, since it is an education thing. So, so we'll just but we'll separately bill for those two items. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Either way, if we spend it or we don't spend it, Paul puts the extra money back into our fund anyway, so it's not like it's lost money. Yeah. But, but, we, but we should be consistent. Okay, so we have a motion to second it, and we have a plan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 600. Great. I will let him know. Uh, he's intending to use some uh, some interns and stuff. I've asked them, you know, please make sure that we're aware when folks are on site and uh, let us know when we can let the police know. Strange shot because the, the interns can be coming from anywhere, so there's going to be out of state, potentially out of state plates parked wherever just to right let, let the police know. He, he does a really good job at credentialing them. Yep, he does. And communicating. Yep. He, he's, the, he's, he's really good at that. Yeah, that's true. They could be out of state plates and right. parking at the middle school. Right. That's it, it's be yeah. Th there's a, still an open wound from the pipeline, so everyone sees out of state plates, and there's a lot of there's a lot of <laughs> talk. So. Okay. Um, Decision on public events and tentative dates for conservation properties. I don't know if it really is a decision issue, but um, I mean, we're we have a couple options. Uh, I've not heard back from from Dave uh, regarding his the invasive. He seemed to be thinking that wasn't going to be a big deal. Um, he was trying to do something in August, but I don't I think it's going to be kind of tough to get it done now. Um, and the 
our bird lady wants to do it sometime in late September, October, before the bird feeders go back up, so people still have time to do some of the stuff. But not now, because there's so much rare activity across the state. So we have an October, you know, September, October time frame, and then we have something else. So I guess if we have any other projects people want to do, any other training classes we want to sponsor? Well, we'll have a winter hike. We have a winter hike? <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> work out less, less no the, the snowshoe got cancelled yeah. lack, lack of snow yeah or warmth you never know yeah yeah just like this summer so hot this winter could be lots of snow I think right. I hope so um man I hope so but <laughs> I don't want it to be warm really not warm um we did we talked about setting a date at Wildcat Falls for in a meet your conservation area, but we have not set that date yet. So. Okay. Same thing in, in Greater. The, the, the subcommittee talked about doing a, a hike uh, publicized by Parks and Rec. You know, like get, get to know Greater Woods. And, but we, we're kind of waiting on after our next meeting to decide on exactly when and where we'll. We should come up with like a good name for the project, for the, you know, meet your park. You know, we didn't want to meet your park, but, you know, meet your park, but, you know, your backyard, or I don't know, something, something fun. See how great Greater Woods is. Well, no, but, I, I, you, you, we could, I, you know, like, have a series. Like, it's, you know, your backyard, Greater Woods, your backyard, Wildcat Falls, you know, your, yeah. you know, just something that we can, I don't know, something fun. I'm trying to think of something catchy. <laughs> I'm not very good about that. I'm going to say, you're a marketing guy now? No, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I tasked my daughter with it because she's the, she's the, she's that one, so. Yeah, good. We'll see. It's your town. Yeah. Um, can we, can we skip over the 111 update for a quick second and go to the, go to the next one? Sure. Okay, so in your, in your packet there, there's a abbreviated email, um, from Tracy Tarr, the GZA, we spoke uh, about having these shelf-ready projects, and this, and we didn't really have anything to chew on. So um, I asked her just for some basic ideas of cost, what it would be, and this was her response. So there, she's saying that they could come up with a with a you know a top ten list with you know a full report on to how they got you know wh how they picked it, why they picked it. The GIS information and all that, and it's you know again, it's going to be somewhere around the four thousand dollar range. She said, if you want just a basic report of it, here's here's the here's what we think they should be, top ten, with not a lot of backup data, is you know twenty five hundred dollars. And to me, yeah, the list is great. I I'd, I'd like to know how they got there because you know I'm I'm learning all this as we go. But um, I don't know. Do, you, do we want to spend? We just want to spend that kind of money to get a list of potential arm projects. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no guarantee. No, there is not. There is not. Other than the fact that if you look, if you go read about what they've done and where they've supported arm projects, they've been very successful in getting them funded. Well, they have so, as a, as a company, they've been across the country, have been very successful at it. So, so, so number one is a two-stage thing. Then number one, the. Point number one, the GIS analysis and plan yes. would be they would they would look at projects that have received ARM funding and tell us what factors went into those decisions so we knew. Um, I, I read that as that they were going to look at our properties kn and knowing what ARM uses for decision process and coming up with a good list of based on our property. Oh, okay. That's how I read it. That's a good question, though. So you may... Well, essentially, they I didn't clarify that with her, but that's yeah. I mean, I guess if they were going to analyze things that have been winning approvals, they would have they would end up coming with a list, and we would get that list, so, right? Right, and that would be the list that they would then rank all potential projects in our town against. Right, and they right. well, they're, they're yeah. So I'm I'm assuming that you know we're going to get a list from them of you know kind of a yeah. I wouldn't say shelf ready, but it's going to be probably pretty close with. With a report behind it of here's the JS data, here's the you know wetland impact, here's the whatever, mm -hmm. and here's the top ten. 
in your town. Yeah, yeah but we wouldn't get things like, it's going to cost $38,000 to rectify this. We'll just get, here's the project. And then we would have right. to, we'd have to do an RFI to I would, figure out I would the costs yeah. associated with that, I would imagine, right? I would assume that, yeah, I mean, because you can't, yes, right. I would think, because you can't, you, you know, year to year, yeah. you know, that might be valid today. Right. But, you know. Yeah, but they could give us an idea of big, little, or small anyway, so I'm assuming. Yeah. And they could, give, they could give our times, too, which, you know, is transcends the market. You know, if it's a, it's a 30 man hour job, yes. Uh, w one thing, um, um, I think at home, there's a lot of folks that, it, the folks that do listen to the meeting, maybe some are familiar, and I think there's a lot that don't know what ARM is uh, and things like that. And I'm really, yep. I'm not trying to prolong the meeting in any way, but even I'm familiarizing myself with some of these acronyms, and I'm assuming that like um, aquatic resource management deals with, as you said, Gage, wetlands and vernal pools and and, and and I guess maybe just a brief, um, just a little why this might be important. And so, because folks see us spend money, and it was kind of like that explanation I got last month on, on the contract with Moosewood. I didn't know until you folks explained to me, and then I saw the importance of why we should do that. Yep. And I, so, I, you know, I'm not trying to, I just think sometimes there's folks at home going, what the heck is ARM and why are we spending it on it and stuff like that. Well, the, the aquatic resource mitigation, um, they, the state puts a lot of money into restoring natural habitat, and it could be anything from waters to upland protecting water sources. Uh, in particular, we had, we had one, you know, and again, we're learning about this too, so don't, don't, I don't want anyone to think that we're some kind of, or I'm some kind of expert, that's not for sure. Um, we had a project we thought was, you know, right on the, the Greater Woods Road, we thought that was going to be a slam dunk. And uh, we were, that was kind of what started this is we put a proposal together, we sent it up to, to DES, and they were like, nah, not really. Mm -hmm. And we're like, wow, we, you know, we, I, I was stunned. I thought that was really, I was stunned. And we brought GZA down, and they walked it with us. And we were out there for 30 seconds. She's like, yeah, this is going to work. I mean, she was like, yeah, no, this is, yeah, nope. <laughs> what do you mean? She's like, no, you're not, you're, not, you're not taking fill out of the wetlands. You're not, you're not going to be protecting any uplands. You're just, you're, you have a construction product. You want to build a road. It has nothing to do with aquatic resource mitigation. So, you know, that was kind of what started the whole thing. It's like, well, what, are we, what are we looking for? What kind of things are, are an aquatic resource mitigation? What is it? And uh, again, the short, short as I can put to it is, is restoring wetlands or protecting wetlands. And it can be anything from your, from, you know, the town wells and the water sources around them and just the surface water and flow and it's uh, the amount of damage we've done you know up until now and now we're finally starting to get to the point where people are re understanding how important it is to put it back mm -hmm. so you know it's silly you know you look at like a huge look at the Everglades the amount of problems we're having with the other Everglades is, the, is people want to build on this beautiful they want to look out at it so they have their yard go right down to the edge and they water it and all the phosphates and all the fertilizer go into it and now you get these huge algae blooms in the gates and it's killing it and so the whole reason that they wanted to live there they're, they're killing it and you know we've you know I got parents have a summer cottage that our dock goes right out into the water I mean it's it's a concrete barrier that poured right out into the lake couldn't do that anymore and you look at you look at things we've done it's you just can't do that stuff anymore and, and finally we're, we're you know people are recognizing it and this is a uh, the ARM fund is, is a way of taking those projects and get actually getting them done. So the state will pay for some of the work. You know, if we, we have to do some uh, fundraising on our own and they will match funds or they'll budget some funds to come in there and help you get these projects done. It's kind of like the bridge, the red list of the bridges. You know, if you find them, they'll they put in some state money into them also. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's so, kind of so historically, in Greater Woods even, there was a project, uh, this is probably going back 10 years now, where I don't really know if you remember, uh, past the YMCA in Merrimack, heading towards Nashua mm -hmm. on Manchester Street. Mm -hmm. um, they, right at the uh, Penichuk uh, Brook, where the Penichuk Brook comes in, mm -hmm. they widened that bridge yeah. years ago. They had that road was closed for a while. When they did that, we took the opportunity to put in a bid for arm money that 
that bridge was making a impact. So we applied for, or we put in an arm grant to get some of that money back to Merrimack, the Merrimack side. And we got approved an arm grant that time in Greater Woods for the Red Maple Trail. Okay. And I think that was somewhere in the neighborhood of $26,000. Yeah, so it was, it was substantial. It was pretty big and they came in, well we had a contractor come in and we had we bid that out. Yep. So that got a number of bids and they repaired that road. And it's, you know, I mean, a, a hundred times better than what it was. But, you know, looking at it, we thought this project that we applied for this year was, you know, way more beneficial and important. So we just assumed that it was gonna be, you know, a slam dunk with ARM, but it just didn't check the boxes At all. that they go for. Okay. It's important to us to get around that, and we think we're protecting the water, mm -hmm. but their check boxes, we don't know how they grade. This, full blown, you know, yep. she's gonna go and say, if you're in this little spot on the map, or this little spot on the map, that's a slam dunk. And that's if you remember the remember the map that she gave us. You know that was one of the you know the, parts, the Chestnut Hill parcel. She's like, that's 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 one. That's number one. So and she just looked. She just did that from a map. Yeah, that that was my question. Yeah. Is uh, GCA are they? She's just looking at our properties, or she's looking at other potential sites and what should or could be protected. She was going to look at the town. Because it's, again, this is mitigation money. So if we have projects going on here, the mitigation can be spent over here. And instead of just paying into the arm fund, we've always elected to try to do mitigation within the town so we can keep the money in the town. I don't want to just pay into the arm fund. Yeah. That's, that's that a, I'm sorry. That's that's another point that's important right. to understand. Yeah, important. Is when you, when you know the bridge projects. Perfect perfect example. The wetlands that they were going to disturb. The mitigation is you pay this kind of money or you go find a project in town that's worth this much money. So instead of just paying into the ARM fund and then that ARM fund can go to fund you know, jobs in Exeter or Portsmouth or wherever, we have always opted to try to go find a, a, you know, an offsetting project in town yeah. that that money could, we can get a project done and have it pay for itself somewhat in town so we don't have to just lose the money. Okay. Another example of there was a small wetlands mitigation required for the new mall, and the money for that ended up buying one parcel within Greater Woods. Okay. Because we instead of instead of ha telling the developer to give the state the money, we had the developer buy the parcel and donate it to the town. So now we have another piece of Greater Woods because of that. So. Okay. Because uh, so so our our stance, the commission stance for many years is, don't let the money leave town. Use the money to do something good in town. It makes sense. I like yeah. that. But, but in, the, in the case this year, is we decided that we didn't have uh, a, a, a project going on in town that was going to disrupt wetlands, so we were just going after the money. We were going to just try and get some, right? Yeah. Didn't work out. But it's, it's a very complicated process. I have it learned yes. from working with you. It's a very complicated process, and the thing is, is that we did think that this was a slam dunk, and, you know, it, by all intent and purposes, it should have been a slam dunk. What we're doing is we're trying to protect this beaver pond. However, we had the town engineer doing work for us that we wouldn't have asked her. You know, we wouldn't have wasted town resources had we known that they were better. So I, I find the $4,000 is a good use of our money so that we're not asking the town to use the resources. We're going for the, the things that are almost 100% sure. Okay. You know? And I don't think the map that she gives us, especially if we have the full blown, you know, yep. with explanation, it's not going to change. Not really. Right. So as long as we can focus on that and keep that information, you know, it's it's good for it's several projects. Yeah, well, we well, that, and that's that's what I'm saying. This is to me, it's going to give us you know shelf ready projects. So when something ha you know we someone needs to do this, we have okay yeah you know what yeah we can do this one. You can offset it with this right here, and right. and we can get these projects done. And that's and again also on that now we got a template. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, I spent more than four thousand dollars on a class before. And, and didn't learn, didn't really feel that I got my money's worth. And if I can get a template now that shows me how to look at this a little differently. Yeah, and, and I think in your proposal, you're writing a grant, 
and yeah. say, you know, we use GZA, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. that goes a long way too. Yeah. <laughs> I pre and thank you for the explanation. Yeah, and you know, I think too, for bringing it up. I think folks at home too, sometimes we, and the same thing happens with the council. We start talking and I'm like, you know, one of us usually says, so oh, time out here. Folks at home don't know what half these acronyms are. Mm. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, this would be good because if we end up doing a bridge, another bridge project such as the Bedford Road Bridge, I don't think the Bedford Road Bridge has a real wetlands issue, but if it did, we would now have a project we can say it, we can apply it against and not have to go searching for them. Okay. So I think that one does have. It has a little bit, yeah. yeah. But I'm not sure it gets to the point where it there's a... have to pay. Yeah, yeah, so. I'm wondering if that Old Blood Road has any impact. That's pretty wet over there. Do you see what's going on? Yeah. The no. old path is now a road. You know where, where Bean Road comes out? Yeah, right. Crosses? Yeah. Right, you go there. Yeah. Now there's no... Sure there's is. no... Yeah, there's a road. It's a four-way. <laughs> it's a four-way intersection now. <laughs> and it's wet. Yeah, it's muddy. That's, but that, that, that's super wet in there all the time. Was someone's going in from from Babusik Lake? Yep. Yeah. Or, or they or they put yeah. they put the trailer and it chips up the way. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a four way it's a four way intersection now. Yeah. Wow. No no doubt. <laughs> well, okay. Back back to this. So I mean, is this? And again, this is this was a this was from just a basic idea of what we we can expect the the report on the cost to be. This is not a proposal. So if we agree to something like this, there's going to be a proposal coming forth yeah. on what it's really going to cost to do. But yeah. again, it's... She so just wants to know if it's worth their time yeah, to do are a we, proposal. Are they, are they spinning the wheels, or hmm. do we want them to go forth and make a proposal? So we're not appropriating an amount of money. We're no. saying go ahead with it. Yeah, we're saying, we're saying well... No, no, we're saying go ahead and, and tell yeah. us what it's going to co really cost yeah. to do yeah. it. So we're, we're looking for a proposal, and, you know, and obviously that's something we're going to... But are we committing money right now? No, but we're committing that we, we want to do it. Yeah. So I would vote if a motion were made, I would certainly vote for this. So I would I would say let's go ahead and ask for a proposal. Okay. I don't I don't feel we need to vote on this because this is again, but we will be getting a proposal and we will be voting. In the on future that. Right. I will vote for okay. it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so chapter one eleven, you want you anything you want to talk about? Yeah, so, so the last time we uh, examined properties uh, to create a potential list or a preliminary list of properties that could be impacted by an update to Chapter 111, we provided that to the town staff for their input, and town staff came back and had three adjustments that they wanted to make to the list. I didn't print out copies of the list to everybody, did, it, but I know you all got a copy yep. from Paul. He, he did CC all of us. so. Um, I guess my question to you is, to all of you is, is do you have any concerns about the three changes that he had in mind? And, and that is uh, on property line number 120. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, on 120, he stated that should remain, that that should be under the, the Conservation Commission, which was a, a back lot to Abusik Brook like we did in all the other back lots, so I, w I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that's consistent. And then <coughs> um, numbers 50, 155 and 156, which were uh, oh, yeah, two roads sure. along, uh, or two parcels uh, by Railroad Ave and Front Street, he felt, um, well, he identified one of them as being a wastewater treatment plant uh, pump station. So. So that, that means it actually has a physical improvement uh, improvement on it, which means it's not an open parcel. So I would I would agree with that. That should remain with the town and should not yep. be considered. And then the other one, he says it's managed by the Land and Water Conservation piece, and I'm not sure what exactly what he meant by that, but that's related to the to the Depot Street boat launch, which is managed by other folks. So right, and so. again improved. And improved, right? So, so I, w I would agree that that one has improvements on as well. So, so, uh, so uh, when it comes to the three changes they want to make, I, I thought in my original response that they were appropriate, and uh, hopefully you all agree. Yep. So, okay. now 
Tim, the railroad offsite, does that include the old Jones Chemical lot there that looks that's been pretty much demoed now and just been sitting there? Well, we, we'd have to dig into exactly where that parcel ID and all that is, but but uh, but they identified it as being a pump station. So. Okay, so because there is that, yeah, the pump station and that, it's like a flat out there yeah. that sometimes gets covered with water and sometimes doesn't. Okay. So, but uh, but yeah, without bringing that up in the GIS system and looking, I couldn't tell you exactly what's on that parcel. So. Isn't that the one that's not in the GIS system though? Yeah, that's the hard one. Yeah. Yeah. So. You have to actually go downstairs and go to the town map in order to actually depict that one. So you're right. So. <clears throat> so. Uh, so with those comments, what I was going to do is uh, is is roll the right now. Paul's comments ended up on a separate on a new column. I'm just going to embed them in into the document. Up up rev the document. It'll become a rev D, and that means we're really. Ready now, according to our phased plan, to start the, uh, the the looking into all the deeds and and easements and anything else and and um, mm, uh, site plans or whatever else that goes with all these properties that are listed as a yes, uh, which means then we did have the offer from the library to help us with that research. So what I was going to do, if if everyone agrees that we're ready to move on to the next part, is to engage with. Uh, the library and and, uh, and and ask them what what they're able to do for us. Mm -hmm. So, yep. which I think will yeah, it'll help relieve community development, uh, whatever they can do. So, yeah, that's great. So, Excellent. Yeah, that's a that's a big help too from the library. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. So, what I'll do is I'll reach out. Um, I'll offer to. I mean, we already spoke about the process in words, but I'll certainly offer to go down and. And walk through, say, a parcel or a few of them, and and be very specific about that way. No one spins their wheels and and wastes time because everyone's time is important. So if you let you me know, I'll come with you. Yeah. yeah okay. I'd like to come too. Yeah. Okay. So and then uh, and then they'll they can start doing the research and gathering all the data, and <clears throat> once we have all that, then we have to start uh, looking at seeing whether any of the parcels, kind of fall into a particular category or not because we, we do know that we have a number of parcels that have conservation easement, easements on them with probably very similar wording so and and, the, and with those will come certain restrictions that we do want to codify such as no motorized use or no hunting and stuff like that because that's reflected in their deeds so so uh, we'll let them all start the library I think is offered to help categorize a little bit at, at a broad stroke but we can all be part of it so great <clears throat> so yeah, we'll keep it moving. So, uh, the the other thing to keep in mind, though, on this is like what came up today, which was the uh, the thought of uh, of, of baiting. Mm -hmm. That's a whole new concept. Right. I mean, it wasn't even thought about here. So, <laughs> so start thinking about what are the if there are any other things that you think have brought enough appeal or desire that we'd want to put it in a chapter 111 that we might not have considered yet. Okay. Because within the next couple of months, we're going to want to be figuring that stuff out. So, uh, along with this, the, the last thing is, is now that we have a preliminary list per our plan, I will forward a copy of the updated version to the town council and, and let uh, the council uh, or council members weigh in if they'd like. We didn't require that they approve the list because we're still in the preliminary stages. We haven't gotten very far down the road. but. At least this way, members of the council could weigh in if they know something about a parcel that we didn't consider. Because that's potentially possible, especially when you look at the the makeup of the council. There's there's some old timers and some new timers in there that might know a parcel that we don't know about. So, yeah. So. Do we want input from subcommittees at all on a particular, <coughs> or is that? I I think when we get a little bit further, once we we okay. yeah, but we are. If you're going to have a meeting with your subcommittee, you ought to update them as the process we're doing because. It will, it will impact the properties that they help us manage. So they might as well become aware of what we're doing and where we're at, so, so especially ones that don't meet very often. So I don't know if someone can get to uh, Cindy or whatever. Can you talk, could you talk to Cindy? Sure. So that way the Horse Hill com subcommittee knows. I think they don't meet again until September, right, or something like that. So. All right, good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, 
Other business. Subcommittee updates. Do we have any? We met. Right. Any other subcommittees? Matt, go ahead. Gina. Oh, so Wildcat Falls had our summer cleanup on July 28th, and do we thank Pete and Tim for coming out on that? Also, um, Pete brought his wife Kathy and Rosemarie Rung and her husband John were there. Um, Liz Petridis and her husband were there, and Mike was there. I'm sorry, you were there because you were you were you were out with me. Bushwhacking, and I got one of those things. I did, I did. I showed it to my husband, and I'm like, look what I have. And he's like, don't get that close to me. <laughs> Folding saw? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cool. I got the... the and, and it's brand new to you. It's brand new, and I'm like, I'm <laughs> brandishing it. My husband's like... <laughs> <laughs> Felt really, really... Well, they gave me like a hand saw. And I'm, I'm going like that, and then Mike came along, and he'd be like, Phew, I'll use this. And I'm like, yours is better. I want one of those. So now I have one. Yeah, I've rigged up all, all kinds of ways. What? And poles and stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, you had the one with the pole, didn't you? Yeah, I had the, the Fisker shears and the limbing saw and everything, which actually helped quite a bit because there was a lot of stuff over the. There's a lot of stuff. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we took. And I think we did maybe a mile. Yeah. One we of did the a mile lot. loops and cut through, but. Hey, one of the things that came up though was uh, was it Liz? I yes. just met her. She brought up, and we okay. saw the erosion on the fire road and the trails. Yes. I had a conversation with the town manager um, today. Kyle sent one of his staff out, and so they're going to come in. They said it shouldn't be a hard thing. They're going to try and get. They're going to actually do it this week, is what I was told, and clean up the the rutting and the, the erosion. So. Thank you for doing that. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah, Liz said um, she emailed me and said that they were out today looking at it. So that's the DPW Good. is out looking Good. at it. So Good. that is excellent. They're going to take care of that cable too. We didn't mention that. I didn't even see the cable. So. Uh, the, the, the Lori told me a while ago. The DPW told me a while ago, they're going to go. They're going to go look at it, see if they could pull it out, or because it, it, it's it's a big cable. Yeah. So it looks like it's probably part of the grounding. Or, it's, uh, I don't know. It's big. Where where is it, Gage? It's on the fire road when you get down towards the end, and it looks like it just goes back into the ground. And it's by, the, by the sand pit, I don't know if you guys went to the sand pit area. Yeah, we, we worked all the way up and around the sand pit area. Yeah. I didn't see it. I, I mean, I wasn't looking for it, but I didn't, I didn't notice it. If you mark it, then I can show it to Pete. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to... Yeah. Yeah, I can mark it. I need to see if they don't have to I will say for the people at home that use Wildcat Falls, thank you, because... Um, very, very little trash. I found very little trash out there. Oh. Very few cans, bottles, nothing. Not. Yeah, it was very clean. I have to say it's very, right about here. Very few. Um, I didn't see any dog messes, so people have been cleaning up after their dogs. Right about so there. good it's, job, everyone. That's, that's about where we think it is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, not it's on the ridge of the sand pit, because the ridge, and then you look down to Wildcat Falls. Okay. It's before you go on the ridge, but it's, some, it's right about in there. Okay. And it's just this big metal intertwined cable. It's we thought maybe it was a grounding cable that was used for the power lines, but it is far away from the power yeah, lines. Yeah, it is. It, it could it could have been for when they because that used to that was a, a a gravel pit that they used when they built the Everett Turnpike years ago. Do you want to take this? So, so it could be it could be you know anchoring, it could be an anchor from between two pieces of cinder block or something. We don't know. Don't know. So sh they were going to go try and kind of give it a tug and. It, or, or it comes out of the ground about this high, and you could lacerate your your leg on it if you if you really weren't paying attention. It isn't exactly in the middle of the trail, but it's just to the yeah. side of the trail. So yeah. we're hoping at best, you know, they could at least just dig it up a little bit and bury the whole thing and yeah. leave it down. But so so the concern with with public works fixing those two that that the the, uh, the section that goes up and then the piece that goes down is is. <laughs> That was eroded by water. Hmm. We have, to, especially coming up and going all the way down, it, water gets a lot of velocity coming down. So the right thing to do is to create ways to stop that velocity, as in create barriers so the water has to slow down before it gets a lot of speed. Because mm -hmm. as it goes faster, it can wash out more stuff, which is why you see the deep rutting that you have. In fact, I took pictures of it the same day mm -hmm. uh, because Gage had already been talking with Lori at Public Works to get it done, but they had other other projects they were working on, but, mm -hmm. um, but 
w what would be recommended is to put some sort of a water bar or a couple of them into that pathway so that way the water would come so far and it would have to slow down and stop and if it loses all that momentum it doesn't have the ability to create ruts okay so that's what that's what they do on a lot of the mountain trails and stuff like yeah. that is they create water bars and that can be done with embedding a log into the road and just creating a stop something that isn't so high that you trip over but that accomplishes the same thing or um, or creating channels yeah, inside so the water goes into a channel and gets shifted to the side and then it gets slowed down there but broadly steps yeah but okay. I if unless unless the town takes action to stop the water velocity they'll be out there next year or the year after doing the exact same project over yeah again. I mean I, I mean we've had an incredible amount of rain these past right. couple of weeks uh, okay. but I mean, it's a good point um, I was happy that they were going to be as responsive and get out there and get that cleaned up at least for the you know a dual purpose it's people using the trails but it's also you, you know god forbid but we've had to go out there yep. at least seems like once a summer the ambulance and the fire have to get out to the falls you know so they need to be able to get out there pretty safely so right. um but i will i will add that in i don't know if that'll get done right this but they may clean it up right away and then maybe put that on their task list so yeah, that's the biggest thing is, is they don't want to keep having to revisit this over and over yep, again. Yep. So. Um, Cindy also texted me earlier. She couldn't be here tonight, and she asked me if I would make a motion to add someone to the subcommittee. So may I do that now? To Horse Hill? To Horse Hill. Are you done with Wildcat? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so. So can I... Before we leave the subject, yes. I think we as a commission should thank everyone that was involved with the cleanup and please extend our thanks to everybody that was involved. Yeah. So, and a great picture on the Facebook page. Someone showed it to me. So. And you know what's interesting is um, a lot of people chimed in and said, hey, if I had known, I'd have come out. So um, I think that fa some Facebook uh, things, you know, Maybe, you, maybe we get even more help next yeah. time. Yeah. Well, it, it was on that page, by the way, yeah. but it, it got dated and was behind the scenes yeah. So, yeah. But yeah yeah well we have some names now that we know we can Good. private message and say hey we're doing a cleanup would you like to come out and help so right. we will do that cool. okay all right so jumping over to horse hill nature preserve um per cindy I would like to make a motion to appoint Bruce Peterson to fill an open member position for a term expiring July 31st, 2021 on the Horse Hill Nature Preserve Subcommittee. That was, that was Newt's position? Yes, I believe so. It was Newt's, Newt's open position, right. yeah, not, not his role. In right. The, right, okay. Just so everyone's clear. And it goes to July 2021? It goes 2021? until July 31st, 2021. Okay. Wow, that's a long ways away. <laughs> so just so that everyone's clear, can you refresh everyone who Bruce is? I know Cindy spoke of him last. Um, yep. As a matter of fact, I can talk about him for minutes because she said... That I know more of him than the minutes if you'd like a. I think it would be good so <laughs> okay. everyone knows. Yeah. Right? Okay. I've done a couple projects with with Bruce and he's helped Tim quite a bit. Tim was the gentleman that yep. appeared at a couple of our meetings talking about the um, Eversource project that was going on. Um, he lives in town and is very active, always in Horse Hill. He's there all the time and he's. Uh, He's helped out on just, you know, said, hey, are you free? And you, yep. He's a he's, uh, very good guy, very helpful, and uh, he's getting to know the lay of the land very well. And he's sort of like eyes and ears out there, a lot like Tim, and uh, really good guy. So I think he's definitely, uh, he's been an alternate now for uh, six, seven months, and uh, now there's a open spot available and uh, I think he would fill it very well so there's a there's a motion right to be I'll second 
second. Made, you made the motion. I made the made, motion. Made the second by Mike. All those in favor? All comments and questions? Good. All those in favor? Yeah. All right. So passes six zero zero. Okay. Bruce Peterson is now a full time member till. Excellent. I shall right text him. Twenty first, twenty twenty one. Would you, uh, Gina? Would you like to do the same thing for your subcommittee, or did you get that far in your meeting? Because you have two people that expired uh, the end of last month. Oh, I did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, we're all staying on, so um, I guess my motion would be who expired. I should know this. Tim, which is an annual thing. Uh, our ex officios are. Oh, she's the ex officio. I'm, I'm oh, the ex officio sorry. now. So you're, you expired. I expired. <laughs> <laughs> my husband and, would be so uh, sad. <laughs> And Andrew. Uh, okay. Can I put myself on? Can I make a motion about myself? Sure. Okay. Let's so. see why not. If okay. you want to stay. Yeah. <laughs> so what would our, our terms go until 2021? Yours would go till 2019 because ex officios no, are one every year Every one year. Time. Okay. And then Andrew would go until 2021? Yes. Unless anybody wants to oppose you. Well, Andrew hasn't said that he wanted to do this. I am assuming that he does. So. I'm going to I'm going to make the motion, and if he decides he doesn't want to be, I'm assuming he wants to be. He seems like he. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I will make a motion for Wildcat Falls that Andrew Duane um, be re-elected as a full-time um, committee member to the Wildcat Falls subcommittee, and that Gina Rosati, me. Um, become the ex officio again until 2019. Second. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank you. Andrew would be the 73121 then. 73121. So motion by, okay. motion by Gina, second by Matt. Any other comments, questions? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Pass the 600. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm about to do it for mine. Okay. So, so I figured so I would <laughs> offer it for you. <laughs> Bless you. So we should put Cindy back in place. Can't let her run away, right? So I move that we appoint Cindy uh, Glenn as our ex officio member of the Horse Hill Nature Preserve Subcommittee until uh, July 31st of 2019. Would you like <coughs> to also uh, do Rose, who is expired? Didn't we just do that? Of last month? I thought we no, took. we did Bruce. No, I think we did Rose Shachenko last month. Ru Rose oh, we was did. Last yes, we did. Last oh, okay, month. so their meeting. Okay. Yeah, I think we d we did it early, just in, on the knowing that it was going to be. Yeah. I forgot. Well, as a full time here, just well, yeah, expired July thirty first, twenty twenty one. See, okay. We we, cool. we, we, we seconded the motion. Well. <laughs> 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 All right, so Cindy Glenn. As the ex officio for Horse Hill Nature Preserve. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> you taking a vote? No, I said that's, that's the motion that's on the floor. Did, who's, did someone second it? Made Tim a motion. Matt second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Pass the 600. Cindy is now she, new she, ex officio until next year, yeah. 2019. She can always change her mind if she wants, but she's going to be so happy with you. I'm texting her now to let her <laughs> know. gets a smiley face too. Okay. All right. I'm gonna jump into Greater Woods map. Greater Woods. We had quite a few people um, falling off and uh, they were all interested in, in staying on. So it was uh, Nat Fairbanks, Steve Fashion, Steve Desolets, Shannon Barnes, actually, no, I take that back, not Shannon Barnes, um, Steve Marble. So yeah, Steve Marble, there's the three, three Steves. Steves. Yes. Yep. And while we're, those were all two. Uh, July 31st, 2021. Um, since Shannon holds that school position, her position would go till 
2019. It's annual like the ex officio. And while we're at it, Gage would go till 731 2019 as the CONCOM ex officio. What are you the ex officio of? I thought you agreed to Woods too. He's I'm the a chair. He's I'm the a chairman. member. You're a member? Yep. Okay. He's the chairman. Ah, okay. Okay. Did you get voted so in? So that's it. That's the full motion. Yep. Second. Comments, questions? All those in favor? Passes six zero zero. Um, since we're on the subject of Greater Woods, when I was up opening the gate for Jack, I peeked in and there were no maps. So really? yeah. Wow. Oh, from the, the school? At the at school. The school yeah. oh, okay. okay. I can I can go drop some more. Make sure to stop by. Thanks. I can drop some more. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Great. I just I just put some in there yeah, too. Me, I feel like I did too. I always just have a chunk in my car and mm. Right. When you're all done doing your update, then I can tell you about what Jack Elliott is doing up there, too. Great. Sure, please. <laughs> I think that's it for That's it for you? Subcommittee. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, Jack Elliott is an Eagle Scout candidate, and he's building an observation deck up at Greater Woods. And um, he has started his, his work, so Saturday... No, not Saturday. He got rained out on Saturday, and that's another thing I need to ask about Sunday. Um, I opened the gate for him, and he went in and dropped off his material, worked till sometime in the afternoon. Um, I did call the police department and let them know that he would be in there and that the gate would be unlocked. It was closed. It was, it was um, chained, but we left it unlocked in case they had an emergency. So they know that, and then... I will be back for him next Saturday. He's going to be working there again. Um, when he is done with his project, he has asked, um, and I assume that you guys have no problem with him putting the plaque up. Um, on, the, on the bench? On, on the, the bench? On the, on the, yeah, on the, okay, on the observation deck. Yeah, and the, it would say um, Eagle Scout Service Project, pla um, Eagle Scout Service Project, and then it would say presented to, and he wants to know, who we want it presented to. And then the rest of it would be by Jack Elliott, troop, and then his troop number and the date. So his question is, who do can he do it? Yes. Can he put that plaque up? And then who do who should it be presented to? That's property that we manage for the school on their pro on their property. Okay. I think all encompassing statement. Yeah. The yeah. town of Merrimack. Yeah. Okay. So it should be I to know, Town of Merrimack, people of Merrimack. So. Oh, the people of Merrimack. To the people, people of Merrimack. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, nice. that's more personal. Perfect. Yeah. The people of Merrimack. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. covers everybody. Nobody's feeling it. Don't get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> you feel included. Hmm? You feel included. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so I will t I will email him tonight, and I will let him know to um, it's a go, and to make the plaque. Presented to the people of Merrimack. Okay. Are all the plaques going to say that? No. Is that what we want them all to say? I think so. It sounds common. Sounds good. A common statement. The people of Merrimack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Unless there's some reason why it's specific to something else, some other group of people. Yeah. I think okay. that's a great. All right. Good. And and while we're on the subject of that, because Saturday it was raining, and. Do I have the right to, to say to a, a um, scout candidate, no, you can't come in our property that day because we don't want your truck, you know, on the wet roads? Can I can I say no if the weather's that bad? If yes, yeah, since you're our, li our liaison to scout projects, okay. so yeah. I you you'll yeah. trust me with that, okay? Because that was kind of a judgment call, and I'm, I was waiting, and he was waiting till the very last minute, hoping it would clear up, and it was it was wet, and I was getting uncomfortable with that, yeah. and I'm thinking, you know. If he's got a pickup truck or a couple of pickup trucks, that's gonna make a mess of the roads. So okay. yeah, he's not gonna hurt that road. Yeah, that one's that one's oh. already a mess. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? That road any worse than it's already hurt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Getting back up, getting back up the other side, to where Link is. I think it would have. You wouldn't driven in that far. Yeah. Maybe. All right. 
So then I'll just use my best judgment. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, that's all I have. Usually when there's standing water, we want people off the, you know. Okay. And I also will be at the, um, is it next Thursday, the town council meeting? Yep. Okay, I'll be there with Brigham Parker. He's going to present um, his project, the outdoor classroom. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Start carrying a line in here with the uh, Eagle Scout update. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on with them. Yeah, no, it's 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 yeah. a it's it, yeah. We do have a lot going on right now. So and it's wonderful because they come and do work and fundraise and they're doing good things for the people of Merrimack. Yeah. Did we have have we heard any more from the Girl Scouts? Um, the Girl Scouts are working with Cindy on the walking sticks. I haven't heard any more about it because once we get to a certain point. Yep. Oh I no, absolutely, out. absolutely. I just yeah. didn't know if you you guys are. Keep in touch with this. Yeah, the way I look at it is, I'll, I'm the point of contact. I will go to the town council meetings when they go. I'll open the gates <coughs> when they're ready. But when it comes time to um, decide on a specific sub the project, yeah. you guys know that more okay. than I don't know that. And quite honestly, I don't. I am never going to be qualified enough to be able to tell them what dimensions a kiosk can be. That's just not my thing or a bridge. That's you guys are the pros for that. So I can, you know. No, we appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. You do very much. Yes. I'll very do much. much. And, and I think a credit to you how many projects we have going on. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of times we need you to be like, here we go, you need this next, this yeah. next, yeah, this you're next. Staying on it. Keep well, there's, you don't it's a do learning. That. Yeah, it's a learning curve. So, yeah. you know, when it, if I start to fall off track, you know, don't be afraid to say, hey, Gina, you need to do this. So. All right. We appreciate what you're doing. Because I think, I think it's going <laughs> very well. Good. So. Good, good. All right, uh, we good with updates? No public comment? And, uh, oh, minutes, I'm sorry. Want to do the minutes? <laughs> I didn't get through them, so. I had one correction. Gina, did you get through them? I got through them, but I, I did have, before we even start, I want to ask you guys your opinion because um, I won't go on record with these. So when we when we were doing the nominations for the chair and for the vice chair, mm -hmm. um, if you look on page six, line six, that's where it starts. So it's Commissioner Karen, nominated Commissioner Perry. Are you guys going, have you guys gone back to commissioner for this purpose? Or would we still call Vice Chair Karen nominated Chair Perry? I, I think what she did is, is, is fine. Okay. Because they, right. they are commissioners. So. Yep. Okay. All right. So then I won't, yep. I won't bring that up later. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the Merrimack Conservation Commission meeting minutes dated July 16th, 2018, with changes as follows. Second. All right. Do you want to do your, yours first? No, I don't have any changes. I'm sorry. I didn't get through the minutes this time. Oh, no. who had a change? I had Who's one. Two? Okay. All right. So you want, you, okay. I'll go first. Uh, so line three, uh, I'm sorry, page three, line 38. Um, I doubt, well, I hope I didn't say that the next meeting was August 1st. That was when the August 1st was the deadline for the the paperwork to be put it to be presented in Hampshire Fish and Game. So I'm looking at that line and I'm saying uh, where it says next meeting is August 1st period as noted in the that whole section I think should be omitted. So you think that we should cross out Chair Perry remarked nope, the next meeting? No, from, from it says Chair Perry remarked where, where it says the next so from next meeting is august 1st period as noted in the that section of the sentence right there can be removed, as far as i'm concerned can be removed as it seems so you'd like it to read chair perry remarked the required paperwork must be submitted we have to okay. by august 1st yes gotcha was really that was the only thing I could that jumped out at me so okay. 
Um, I found yeah, on. I, I'm, I'm sorry. No. I think I think we lose by doing that. Well, the next meeting is not August first, and it was correct. It's on a right, Tuesday. right, 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 right. So, so it's it's quite possible when you look at the tape that it'll say the next meeting. You stated the next meeting is August sixth. Okay. As noted in the request, the required paperwork needs to be submitted by August 1st. That's why Councilor okay. Albert commented is always next year. Cause, okay. Because that wouldn't make sense, right? Yep. All right. That's a, that's a good point. I mean? So, so I think you should just change it to August 6th. August 6th. Right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. So on page two, line 11 and 12, um, outdoor classroom was capitalized in other locations. So to keep it consistent, I would capitalize the O in outdoor and the C in classroom. And then on page five, line 15, Commissioner Tenhag spoke of um, Right now it says, spoke of success of the Matt Gasparia. So I would take the the and move it before success. The, the success. The success, yeah. The six spoke of the success Matt Gasparia okay. has yeah. had. And that's all I had. Any bails? You good? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes six zero zero. Do you have any, uh, any comments? Any comments? Uh, really, nothing from the council. Yeah, we uh, had our. We're having our. We had didn't have two meetings uh, in July. We only had one, so there's not a lot to update you on. And then we have our next meeting coming up in August. So there's not a lot really to go on right now to to really give you at this time. Hey, can I ask you a question, though? Yes, sir. So you had a recent offsite, if you want to call it that, or yeah, I'm say, I did. Yeah. Sorry, you had a, you had a recent meeting with the council offsite, or or you had your all day meeting. Oh yeah, we had our retreat. Retreat. Okay. I, was trying to figure out the right word. It sounds um, so nice, but it really yeah. is. <laughs> I'm I, thinking I got a round of golf and a massage or something, and it turns out it's not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've been to a retreat as well, so it's been a while now. But um, uh, conservation, I believe, was one of the agenda items, or conservation properties, or something like that. Was there anything related to our activities that came up that we should be aware of? I don't have the notes in front of me, Tim. I can, I can. Yeah, if you don't we're mind. We're supposed to get our goals. We, we sit down, we formulate our goals and everything for the year. And um, I'm trying to think. I know we talked uh, a lot about Watson Park and some of the things that are happening there over okay. the next year. Mm -hmm. um, and the trail coming through. So that may have the been trails? Okay. the trail going underneath the Chamberlain Bridge. Yep. Yep. So that may, may be where you're thinking. But let me, let, let me make a note. And what I'll do is uh, we're supposed to get... Uh, our uh, the uh, basically the minutes of the meeting mm -hmm. to talk about so we can review during the year of what goals we've set so yeah. um, and maybe I, maybe there's something more there but nothing jumping out at me right now yeah. all right so yeah maybe it was trails I forget exactly what the agenda item the line item was but it was way down in your long list of things you're going to cover so. yeah I'm trying to yeah. I, I, I okay. don't have that paperwork in front of me but yeah, yeah. okay fair okay do you have anything else? No. What? Yes. Uh, so I've been reaching out trying to get uh, interest for mem members for the Scalara Waterfront. Uh, I've only had two interested so far. Uh, so if anybody's interested, <laughs> um, I'm getting uh, creating a subcommittee for the Scalara Waterfront Park. Let us know. Uh, I just had a the two that um, are interested are Anita from the historical oh, and Mark Todarski. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I've gotten so far. I just had a question: Are, are the signs for uh, uh, Scalar? Are they, are they 
You would get mm -hmm. proofs. Um, I think he's still working on the quote. I haven't got the quote okay. yet. Oh, that's right. Those are the ones you sent out. Yeah. Right. We did. We did get proofs, and they look really good. Mm. Exactly like we were talking about with the town seal on it. Nice. Um, Kristen, from uh, the manager's office, provided him the, you know. Yep. The real. The the seal. So. Looks really good. You have any other comments? Um, yes. So Amherst, I was really uh, I was helping them out with a project recently, and it was a 60-foot bridge. Wow. With steel I-beams. And uh, all installed manpower. And they have two more. 60 foot steel I beams. Oh, left over? What are you talking about? I'm sorry, I, what are you talking about? Um, and I'm a bridge with 60 foot I beams. A bridge that was constructed in Amherst to have this leftover material? Yes. Oh. They have two more 60 foot steel I beams. Give them away or sell them? Give them. Ooh. You just oh. have to transport them. Tim can put them in his backyard. And have a <laughs> and have a place for them. <laughs> they, they're, you said they're steel. They galvanized, or are they just raw, versus raw steel? Just galvanized. They're for life. So, like, do you have something in mind that they could be used for? I do. Yeah, we get lots of bridges. <laughs> we have lots of water in town that need bridges. Yeah. But I'm just saying we have bridges. So if we can think of a location, we have I beams. We could build a bridge. When do we need to know by? Um, they're pretty comfortable where they are, and I don't think anybody's going to make off with them. Probably not. Carry so. walk away with them. <laughs> <laughs> One on the so each arm. Tell my dog it's a stick. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could do it. <laughs> so we've, uh, you know, we've got time, but I don't think we have forever. So. Okay. All right. Yep. No, we could just we can. Uh, chew on. Where would we put them? Maybe across water. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, you mean for storage purposes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that I, would we, be. Yeah, that'd be easy. I can. Yeah. I got woods in my house. I can. I can sit them in there. <laughs> All the rest of the stuff I got sitting. Out. How would we transport them? Th there's a couple contractors that have said, if you're ever going to do a big project and you need to move something, that they would be willing to help. Okay. Mm. So should we agenda? And they're this? sitting right next to a uh, excavator. So they could be placed on a flatbed pretty easily. Okay. So should we put it on the agenda for next meeting? Yeah. If we, if we can, you know, think of places. Do we need agenda or anything? No. I mean, we want them. Yeah. So we're just looking for a place to use them. Mm -hmm. So you want to just. So I mean, what's if you? Yeah, you can we can agenda if you if you can come up with a bridge and a plan by next I'm meeting. That's great. I'm not coming up with a bridge. I'm just thinking. <laughs> so just so you want to just park them in your yard then? Sure, I can. Yeah, okay. Okay. we can we can find them anywhere. We can, we can find places to put them. I'm not worried about okay. that. Mm -hmm. oh. There you go. Yeah. But if we're gonna if we if we think we've got a place, instead of moving them twice. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We could move them once. So. There's gotta be sections of the South Eagan that aren't 60 feet. <laughs> that's the thing. That's 60 feet. That wouldn't, that wouldn't do this. That, that's not long enough. Oh, man, that's, no, it, that's not long enough. Is it gruff or anything? Mm. Yeah, I guess yeah, you have to be careful when you're thought, thinking about those kinds of places. Okay. You need permit? Oh, yeah. 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 Unless you're bank to bank. Yeah, and you're out, and you're outside of the do not disturb buffer. Yeah, so even on the conservation properties. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's places. Uh, there's uh, there's a spot on on Loop Trail uh, at Horse Hill if you really wanted to. When we keep having to f fix and move that bridge around, just past the Beaver Pond. Whatever. That's that's an option. So you need the helicopter drop them there. I was going to say, even if you put them there, how would you get it across the river? I mean, that's You should see how it was done. How heavy are they? They build they? bridges across rivers, you know. With come along. Oh, but I mean, we're, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're not going to be doing it with the next one. Yeah. Come alongs. Yeah. Come alongs. Yeah. Steel beam. Yeah, wow. you just, yeah, just crank them across. Yeah. 
stood him up. Tough come along. With like a scissor come along. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty oh impressive. Gosh, I, I wish watch. there was like a time lapse. Time lapse. Yeah. I couldn't watch. <laughs> that, that's it. I just. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Tim, you got anything? Only that I've been a little delinquent with our website and not following up with things, so I can't report a lot of updates on it, even, even though a, a quarter has gone by, so I apologize. So. I've been busy. Uh, yeah. So I, w I was thinking about the website the other day, and I meant to say this to you um, and, and everyone. You know, I, I'm sure we're all, you know, I, I think from being involved in this, I've changed a lot of what my reading, things I'm reading and things I'm doing, and I've some of the books I've read are really interesting. And they're the stuff that I only started reading because I got involved in conservation commission. And I would love to share that stuff. So I mean, I don't, I'd almost like to have a page on our website, you know, our library. And just, you know, if you've, if you've got books that you've read that you thought were really great, just, you know, we could just list them with the IBN, the ISBN number on it or something like that, just so people yeah. can go looking for them. Is a conservation theme? Yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever Yes, they're, uh, they're, I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're conservation theme, but I mean, I've read stuff that I would never, have, I would not have picked up. You know, ten years ago I wouldn't have picked it up, and now I did. And I'm like, wow, that's a great little book. I love that, and I'm glad I did. You know, so. I would love to see the books there, because I mean, like. I just, I'm, I'm trying to. We, well, obviously, we want our, we want our website to be. Right. A draw. Yeah. You know, I love people to go to my website and say, oh. You know, oh, well, that's kind of cool. I never did anything about that. You know, yeah. a book on oh, that's neat. You know, we need our projects that we're doing, stuff like that. So I mean, if we if we have the information to keep it changing, it keeps it relevant. Yeah. Because so. I do um I get this thing called the book bub, which gives me when things come up for Kindle or a Nook yep. or whatever, it's like the dollar ninety nine ninety nine cent, and I've come up with a couple, you know, like backpacking for idiots or dummies or whatever, and. But I've downloaded two or three. I haven't read them yet, but I've got them. But you're right. The Conservation yeah. Commission theme books are just keep just keep them somewhere and make a list, and we can you know yeah. not that we need more to do, but <laughs> <laughs> you know we could get we could make a list and just say this is this is our library. You know, this is books we find interesting type of thing, or I don't know anything. I'm just you know a book is fun you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know places you want to go that because you never thought of going that you go now because you're involved in this. You know I don't know anything. The library could um, set a little corner or shelf, you know, so if we had books, something to talk about. That's all I got. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Motion to adjourn. Second. No. Second by Matt. All those in favor? Aye. Passes 600. And uh, so we are out at 825.